Hi, I'm Randy Marsava. Let's do business for God. I'm going to start with Psalm 91 today. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him I will trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noise and pestilence. Cross-reference says, save you from the raging epidemic. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flies by day, nor for the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor for the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand, a thousand shall fall at your side from various things like COVID, and ten thousand at your right hand, <laughs> but it shall not come nigh me. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation, thy habitation, there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. All, A-double-L, -L, all your ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. Thou shalt tread upon the, the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. Because he, he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. I urge you to invest a lot of time in Psalm 91. In verse 14, it says, Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high. In slang, I'll make him look good. I'll make her look good. That's God talking. I'll make you look good. I will set him on high because he has known my name. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall, watch how God gets specific, and I will say it in that tense. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. That's God talk right there. That's God talk. I just made it personal. 
I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him. That's God talk. That's an interpretation of God right there, of his attitude. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him. There it is again. With long life I will satisfy uh, him and show him my salvation. Praise God. This reminds me of Brother Hagin would ta uh, teach us <coughs> that he had picked out all the one particular flavor of scripture and that's shining through right here in all the hymns. These are hymn scriptures. I never, I never saw it from that angle before. When I'm saying him, I'm talking H-I-M, not H-Y-M-M. -M. No, I'm talking him. That's cool. These are him scriptures. I will show him my salvation. Just think of that. God picking you out of the crowd. Did you know that you can say unashamedly, actually and boldly, that's reversing that. You can say it boldly, as boldly as you um, got it in you. I'm God's favorite kid. I'm God's favorite child. Why? Because I said so. <laughs> I just created the atmosphere. I just pulled it in with expectation. On the last video, there was a lot of emphasis on expectation. Repetition of expectation. 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 So we made that video about a week ago. And uh, it was posted on a Tuesday at noon. And I noticed somebody else that comes on preaching within about 90 minutes of the time when we we released the video and there was a very very strong repetitious um, expounding upon expectation from that guy same day within two hours same thing expectation 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 that's the common thread of the Holy Spirit sewing things together more more than a question to get a kick at the Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. So watch this. I want to sew this together. I think of the stitches on a football. You know, they sew it together, pull it tight, and da 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 da, da and they. They stitch that football, and you know, and the reason I'm saying football because that's a strong thing. They kick that thing around, they fall on it, they beat it up, and and we can stitch these things together with the word, and there's tremendous strength there. It's a good comparison. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high. Because he has known my name. I want to focus on that now. Because he has known my name. That's Psalm 91, verse 14. Watch. At the tail end it says, Because he has known my name. If you've never noticed that before, now magnify that. Because he has known my name. Well, what's that got to do with it? Somebody could say. I will set him on high because he has known my name why how how does that tie in you'd say because he's known my name why would the Lord say that because he has known my name because he has known my name well let's work that I will set him on high because he has known my name he shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. 
with long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Now, I want to focus on this more. Verse 14, it says, Because he has known my name. Hmm. Verse 15, tail end. I will deliver him and honor him. Now, I want to start pulling the stitches together. Verse 14 talks about because he has known my name. Verse 15. I will deliver him and honor him. And honor him. And honor him. And honor him. Okay. In the name of Jesus. I can say this at the direction of the Holy Spirit. I can articulate this the way the Holy Spirit says for me to do it. In, in his fashion. When I discovered this. Decades ago. I had learned that God has and can be referred to with different names and praise God I didn't know we were going to go here today wow this this is just toko koshi mana mana na kosh ten steke teka inga mama vara mana na kosh teke de vera oh god knows everything he's just he's so sharp Praise God. Wow. Hmm. I had read F.F. F. Bosworth's book, Christ the Healer. And in that book, I believe he refers to the seven names of God. Either seven or nine. No, but I'm not going to get hung up on that. Not even a little bit. Because since then, I heard somebody else, and they refer to um, the X number of names of God. Like Bosworth, I think he said seven, and this person said nine, and, and then I think they also said, but, but maybe 12 or maybe 13. Watch. They're both right. They're both right. And now here comes the gravy. Well, I had meditated on those seven names. I got those. There's like they're uh, in my bedroom on the back of the door right now. I don't know how many years they've been there. Couldn't tell you. Oh, this is good. <laughs> oh yeah. This is this is sitting on daddy's knee stuff. Glory to God. Mm. Oh, 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 oh. Roll it out, Lord. Roll it out, Holy Spirit. Roll it out. Cut up a cut up. Oh, my mama, my dad, I cast it. Mom, she mama, my mama, na cut that. The kick, kick, kick. Hey, mama, my mama, dad, I cast it. Shush, shush, shush. So you know, I'm meditating on that over the course of time. A lot. I would take the different names, and I would, you might say, I would dissect that name to the best of my ability, and then you know, take it apart and put it back together and get references on that name from different sources and then, you know, add that to and put that in addition to what, I, what I'd what i learned. And I was building, you know, it's kind of like building a case. And I'm, and I'm building my understanding of the names of God. And I'm really digging into this. This was not a passive thing. I'm really digging into this. I knew I'd struck pay dirt, so to speak. <laughs> I'm looking to work this for all it's worth. I want to know all about health. I want to 
want to know all about righteousness. I want to know all about the Lord of hosts, you know, protection, etc., etc., etc. And there's no end to this. You'll see. You'll see more as I talk about this. I've been raised on cowboy shows, cowboy movies, what we call westerns, ever since I was a child. I'm named after two uh, celebrity um, cowboy stars. My first name and my second name, cowboy star names. So my, my dad liked cowboys. Well, if you watch cowboy shows, one of the things that I noticed in the cowboy shows is there's really a lot of Indians. The, there's, it's very common that there's an Indian theme from one angle or another. And on occasion, you know, the Indian dialogue, North American Indian, American Indian dialogue in the movies, they would speak um, broken English and they would translate literally especially watch this if they were talking about another Indian and if they mentioned the other Indians name and on one occasion the Lord illuminated he expanded on that in my thinking he it's it's like a spotlight came on it and and the curtain was pulled back and all of a sudden I had an insight I'd never seen before. And it was because of the name. Uh, I don't remember what the Indian's name was, but I'll, so I'll make something up. But um, uh, the one Indian referred to the other Indian, so let's say he called him uh, uh, Tall One, uh, Tall One Who Killed Bear. And when I heard whatever this name was, it dawned on me um, he's really using that not as a name, but as a description. He's using he's he's that's his reference point. His reference point to that other Indian is the description of that guy. And that struck me as uh, I'd never seen it somehow in that light before. And as time went on, I noticed that more and more. When the Indian would talk about the other Indian, you know, one who walks tall or um, short woman or um, Deer woman, you know, like a deer that runs through the forest. Different, their names are the descriptions. They didn't call, you know, he didn't call her Alice or Joe or Homer or Ralph. It was a description. So I, I, as I said, over the course of time, I meditated on the names of God. And on an occasion, the Lord, the Holy Spirit simply said to me, he said, you've seen all these different descriptive names. And by, by then, I, there's a whole... A lot of them, a whole, you know, a whole list of these different names, Indian names and descriptions through naming. 
Horma ét okos téber a mandarák hosszú szönszté, két ét csics, két erre a bádárák kástes, a szönszté, kettere, két erre, két erre, két erre, két erre, And he said to me, he said, you learned um, my different names through, for example, Bosworth and, and uh, this one and that one. Noim cheke kekem a mamam. And he said, now I want to put that together for you. He said, when you he said to me, he said, I don't have one name, like that description. He said, I have many names. He said, you call me whatever you like. Call me anything you like. And he elaborated on that. Lord, help me so I can get this said properly. Think of the scripture that says, I'm all things to all men. This is really easy to sew, the, to sew this up together. Make this, oh, it's, it's excellent. I've been meditating on it for decades, so this is easy for me to understand. And I'm rebuking resistance from the enemy that this does not come out smooth and easy for you to understand. I'm rebuking that on the inside right now, saying, tell you keep your, your ugly face and your ugly suggestions away from this effort happening here, this successful effort happening here in Jesus' name. He said, you can call me anything. He said, you can call me Jehovah that provides pickup trucks. You can call me Jehovah that provides health. You can call me Jehovah. See, any of you that has, have looked at studying this, you know about Jehovah Nissi, Jehovah Shema, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Jireh. He said, he said, take my name, Jehovah, and put in whatever, tag that onto the back end of it, of anything that you're after. He said, you don't have to bottle me up like a genie in the bottle with seven names. You don't have to do that. He said, you can put anything behind my name. You choose. You Go ahead and put it in there. Go ahead. It almost smacks of, go ahead, make my day. Put anything in there. Jehovah the house provider. Jehovah the, the uh, popularity provider. Jehovah the fame provider. Jehovah... Uh, the money provider, Jehovah, Absto Oste the plane ticket provider, Jehovah Todokoste, the perfect sight provider, Choshikina, Jehovah Revelation knowledge provider. You can put and hook anything onto the back end of that thing, linked right onto it, like a railroad coupler car, car coupler. You could you could put any any name on the back end of that. I'm talking about decent names, of course. Okay, so getting back to Psalm 91, watch this. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he is because he has known my name. Okay, now watch. Watch, I'm I'm throwing a loop around this real quick now, and I'm gonna jerk on that rope and bring this all together. Because he has known my name, he shall call upon me, and I will answer him, and I will be with him in trouble, and deliver him, and honor him. I want to show this to you. Watch. Verse 14, verse 15. Because he has known my name, keyword name, verse 15, he says, I will honor him. Now watch this when I put this together. Just like I'm going to take the stapler right now and go wham and bring those two words together like a stapler. Because he's known my name. I will honor him. Watch this. You take the time. You take the time to get in God's presence. You get into the word and you find out about his name. You learn to revere his name. And watch this. Verse 15 where it says honor. Rest assured. You take the time to find out about God's name and watch this. I'm telling you, he will honor you. 
I can see the Father God even right now in my mind's eye. Him saying, you, you want to take the time to learn my name? Oh yeah? Well then I'm going to honor you. Because you did that? Because you found out? You went to the work to find out about his name? Who is this guy? What, 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 what is this? You know, to the, to the newcomer that doesn't know anything about this stuff? Who is this? It says, it's like it looks like it says Jehovah. Jehovah. Who is that? What is that? And then ask around if you're new at this. Ask somebody that does know. Take the time to find out about his name. And a benefit of that is he will honor you. Imagine God, like I said, looking down and seeing you doing that. And I'm telling you, it happened to me. It already happened to me. I took the time, and sweetie, I took some, some real time, time, I invested time to find out all about his names, and as a result, he recognized that I had done that, and he showed up, and he honored me. Well, let me tell you, when God honors you, that's a package. That's not a singular thing. That's a package. I'm telling you. A package. Glory to God. Oops, Dicky. I'm going to go to the question. 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 I'm going to go to Oh yeah, I got this phrase in the last uh, day or so. I don't think I'm going to explain it. I think I'm going to put it out there and you get it from God. Maybe we'll talk about it later. I heard this phrase. Laughter. <coughs> Excuse me. Three words. Laughter of disguise. Laughter of disguise. Laughter of disguise. I might say, it happened in laughter of disguise. Or it happened in an atmosphere of laughter with disguise. I'm going to leave that there for now. You can get a phrase. Doesn't have to be a Gettysburg address. Same as a prophecy. When you when you get a prophecy, when you get words, it doesn't have to be ten minutes long. You make sure you get it from when you're getting it. You're getting it from God. Starts where start where He says and stop where He says. Don't don't give a dissertation of thirty minutes. Don't do that. Unless God's all over it. You can get a phrase. And it can become, and you can see it, become global in hours or less. Watch this. This is one of the times this has happened to me. It was Saturday morning, about 8 a.m. I was laying in bed sleeping. And what I'm going to tell you, it's never happened to me before. I don't know if it's ever happened since. But I was laying in bed sleeping, <clears throat> flat on my back. And I was out. I was, I was really sleepy. I am not juicing this story. 
I'm telling you exactly like as though you had sat there with the camera and shot a video of what happened to me. That's the way I'm I'm telling you this. Like it has been recorded or something, but it wasn't. I'm laying there flat on my back and I am sound asleep. Laying there and all of a sudden, out of a sound sleep, my eyes, my eyelids popped open and I was awake just like that. And I sat straight up like a mechanical man, straight in the bed, perfect posture sitting there. I am fully awake, fully awake. And I realized that something really extraordinary had happened. So I had an air about me of, I see something has, uh, extraordinary has happened here. And I'm looking to see what's next. On the inside, I was I was very cognizant of the fact that I was thinking, I'm not saying a word, I'm not moving, nothing. But I'm, I'm, I'm knowing on the inside what's next. So I'm sitting there, no noise, no distractions. And I hear this, and I'll, I'll imitate the voice. There has been a change. I sat there without moving like a like a statue for minutes listening to see if there's going to be more not talking no distraction listening and I got satisfied I don't think there's more to this like more words so uh, I sat you know I think I laid back there has been a change. Kind of a stern voice like that. Not scowling, not angry, but you know, very profound, strong. You know, and I kind of thought, wow. That was Saturday morning. Okay. The attacks on 9-11, watch, I sat up in that bed, it's Saturday morning, it's about 8.30 in the morning, about 10 o'clock Tuesday morning, the towers in New York City were attacked, within, I would say, and I know this for a fact, I don't have to check with anybody, because I was working in my shop and I came back in the house. And when I came back in the house, I saw on television those planes hit that building. So I was eyewitness to the thing by television, if you understand what I'm saying. I wasn't out on the road. I wasn't out in the field. I wasn't busy in a factory. No, I happened to. I happened to come in the house and see the whole thing. And the first thing that said to me, the, the first thing I thought to myself was, Pearl Harbor, right there in front of your face, boy. Pearl Harbor, right there. Even the numbers are similar. Around 2,500 each. Remarkable. So I watched it for a while. I would say within... From the time that it happened on screen, from the time that it happened on screen, I would say within, my recollection is about 20 minutes, the newscasters on the various channels, one by one, started saying this phrase. And you know what the phrase was? Or the phrase is? There has been a change. Same five words. Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. I believe 9-11 was a Tuesday, Tuesday morning. In, the, in that short time, that phrase became global. 
global. When God gives you a word, um, sometimes you will see that happen in you. Where, you know, something that you got, <laughs> you'll see it unfold in front of you. This is global. It's not national. It's not international. It's global. You want it bigger than that? It's universal. Some of you out there <coughs> that, are, that will hear this and are listening to this, you are interested in uh, getting property. I wish there was a plant, a potted plant in here because it's got dirt in it and I would show you some dirt but there's not one right here. So, some of you are interested in acquiring more property. So I'm going to tell you this. I've been around farming and farmers. And a common phrase in farming is if a guy, a farmer wants to buy another farm, he'll say, he'll use this phrase. I think I'm going to go buy that piece of dirt. And that means, you know, that, that, that farm or that property. So I'm telling you, if you're interested in some more dirt, you know, real estate, property, I don't tell this to everybody, okay? What I'm what I'm um, unfolding in front of you. This is a spiritual gift, G I F T. You are receiving a gift today, okay? Get that through your wisdom section. If you desire more dirt, okay. I gotta watch what I say here. I told what I'm telling you to uh, a very, very uh, important person. And I said this, you are looking to acquire some more dirt, some more acreage, some more property. So I'm telling you the Holy Spirit has told me to tell you this. Go buy some bags of soil, dirt. Take those bags of dirt and sow them to whoever the Lord tells you to sow those bags of dirt to. And believe for your harvest to come back to you as dirt. Real estate. Okay. And the last time I checked with this person, it's working to the tune of millions of dollars. So I just told you about dirt. Okay. Here's the other thing the Lord just spoke to me. Some of you are interested in oil dealings, whether it's oil wells, oil property, oil leases, whatever it is. Okay, watch. Little becomes much when it's placed in the hands of the Lord. You're interested in oil? I'm telling you this by the Spirit of God. Now remember, little becomes much when it's placed in the hands of the Lord. When you, when you place that in the hands of the Lord, He will hit it, wham, with the anointing. <laughs> the anointing of increase, there's no, there's no limit. To keep it simple, I'm telling you this. 
go buy somebody an oil change. Find out, find somebody that needs their car, the oil changed in their car. Do that. Sow that out to them and then believe, believe, believe for your harvest of oil. Okay, shake your head. Yeah, say yeah. Okay. Yeah, say yeah, I'll do it. I'll do it. I have oil interests, so <laughs> I'm shaking my head. Yes, Holy Spirit, I hear. Like the robot <laughs> in the old movie, I hear and obey. Yeah, well, Holy Spirit, I hear and obey. We're not playing games, people. These are spiritual principles. These are absolutes. These are absolutes. Gravity is an absolute. Treat the word of God like that. It's an absolute. That's what it is. What about the kid push Oh yeah, I want to remind you. Concerning harvest and harvesting. You ready for this? Get your catcher on. The devil is terrified of your harvest. He's terrified of your harvest. The devil is terrified of your harvest. The devil is terrified of your harvest. Watch this. When you receive your harvest, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to run around and you're going to shoot your mouth off. You're going to shoot your flapper off and tell everybody what God did for you. That's the best thing you can do. The devil is terrified of you flapping your gums all over the place and telling off what God did for you. The devil is terrified of that. Because you overcame by the blood of the Lamb and the word of your, you fill in the blank. Don't be a stranger to the covenant of God. We are not strangers to the covenant. We are friends to the covenant of God. You know... You know, the devil is a bastard spirit. He has no father. The devil is a bastard spirit. You hear what I said? I opened a set of meetings one time. I can remember the first uh, first two lines I said. <laughs> how would you like how would you like this one right in the face? First the first line I told them was this. I'm sitting there being quiet before the Lord looking for my first line to say. So the, the first line that I came up with was this. This is what I said to the people. I started at one side of the room with my eyes and I looked all really slow. All I fanned the whole room like that. And the Holy Spirit told me to say this. I looked at those people, you know, you narrow your eyes and do that. I said, you are good people. I said, you are good good people you are good people you are good you are good people I kept repeating that I kept repeating it because I was driving that into them I was soaking them in and pointing right at them I said you are good You are good people. You are good people. I can even feel the anointing on that right here, right now. You are good people. You are good people. You are good people. Get that in you. You are good people 
you are good people. Glory to God. Oh, holy my gosh, dish. You are more than a question. That blessing be upon you. That blessing be upon you, people. You are good people. Make no mistake about what I'm telling you. Make no mistake about this. You are good people. You are good people. You are good people. You are good people. You are good, good, good people. As God is my witness, I know some of the finest people on the face of this earth. I am so blessed. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, spill that on them. Spill that on the people watching, Daddy. You are good people. <laughs> You are good people. Soak that in. Receive that. Receive that. Turn your expector on. Expect God to minister to you through this. You are good people. 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 Good people. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, praise God. That's strong here. Oh, hallelujah. You are good. You are good people. You are good people. Soak in that. Soak in that. Soak in that washing of the water of the word on you right now. Oh, yeah. Cast all your cares upon him because he knows what to do with them. Cast all your cares upon him because he knows what to do with them. He can hit those cares with the anointing and turn those cares into assets and bless you richly. That's how it works. Come on. Cast all of your cares upon Jesus because he knows what to do with them. What does he do with them? He hits those cares with the anointing and reverses the curse. And it, what was cursings, he flips it, reverses the curse and causes blessings to boomerang back at you. Boomerang back at you. Bounce back. Blessings bounce back to you. Hallelujah. Receive that. Receive that. Receive that. Oh, yeah. Receive that. Hallelujah. Receive that. Receive that. Receive that. Receive that. Glory to God. Praise God. Receive that. Receive that. Hallelujah. Speak it out your mouth. Say, I receive that. I receive that. Wherever you're sitting, wherever you are, speak it out. I receive that. I receive that. Receive that, good people. Receive that word. Receive that word, good people. Hmm. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Oh, hallelujah. 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 I believe the Holy Spirit's changing tracks a little bit here. Urontoshte Grim Grigrig dosh Optezeshte Mondara Kindindo Shtie Grigatike Taigo Ike Kishtish Mondamanere Kishtish Daddy. I witnessed in the media that Canada is on fire. 
from coast to coast. Talk to us about that. I heard the phrase in the spirit, Canada is on fire. Speak to us, Daddy, about that. I haven't forgot about you, Elijah's. You, Elijah's, that I have told you, you come forth now. Come out of your penthouse. Come out of your outhouse. Come out of every house. Come forward. Come forward. Fulfill your calling of God. Tell us, Daddy, about Canada's on fire. Mishji kriki toi kafesa. Ah, 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 ah. Watch, watch, watch. Read. Learn how to read signs in the spirit. I was just speaking of Canada on fire. In the next breath, I say, Elijah's come forth from your penthouse or your outhouse. Come forward. Now, isn't that in the spirit, I caught that. Isn't it interesting that in one breath, it's mentioned about Canada is on fire. The next breath is, yeah, well, Elijah's come forth. Hmm. That's like reading sign when you're out hunting. That's like reading sign. Learn how to read sign. Listen. Read sign in the spirit. Listen. For as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Listen in the spirit. Don't let things that are said just go flying past you. Have your catcher on and catch key things, key words that have been said. Write things down. And then look back at them and go, what was said during that meeting? Put all of your talking points on paper and then go over them later and say to yourself, what was said at that meeting? What did we talk about? And say there's six things written down. Look at those six points. Watch. I'm teaching you this. I'm pulling back the veil on these things. Don't let stuff fly by at 100 miles an hour. Watch. Go over that ground again. What was said in that meeting? Well, we talked about this, that, 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 and that. So when I look at that, do you see how those six, let's say, spices in the stew, each of one of the six had something to say, and that's important. But watch this. But when you put the six together, all together in the stew, then you also identify the flavor of the whole. The W-H-O-L-E. Get it? You get to see the six, and then you get to see the finished product. What was the picture that was painted? Oh, praise God, people. Oh, <laughs> that, was, that was precious from the Holy Spirit right there. To bless you. You're good people. You are good people. Praise God. Praise God. I say in the name of Jesus, we are blessed even more than the sons of Issachar. Oh. We recognize. That's number one. Number two. And we know what to do. Recognize. And know what to do. Recognize. And know what to do. Watch. Put them together. Recognize. Know what to do. Recognize. And know what to do. Wow. That's a, that's a power combo. Recognize. 
and know what to do. Be blessed. <laughs> be blessed. Be blessed. Maybe that's a new word. Glory to God. Now available, Randy Varsava's book, Where's My Harvest? Full of godly principles and testimonies. Where's My Harvest will help you build your faith to receive God's abundance in your life. Also available are Patty Varsava's three books in the Today's Virtuous Woman series. Books 1 and 2 will encourage you in your walk with God as a virtuous woman based on Proverbs 31. Book 3 is a cookbook full of delicious recipes along with uplifting scriptures. All these books are conveniently available online at Amazon.